A man once believed that there would soon be a massive earthquake in Northern California where he lived. Doesn't sound too crazy. Except he was a diagnosed schizophrenic who then began to hear voices that he claimed would warn him about this imminent disaster. And not only that, he could prevent the event with one grisly solution, human sacrifices. His name was Herbert Mullen, and this is his story. Herbert Mullen was led to court today from his special security cell. He walked into two courtroom first. He killed a mother and her two children, four teenage boys, a young married couple, and a 72-year-old former prize fighter. Of Mullen's plea, not guilty and not guilty by reason of insanity. If the jury finds Mullen to have diminished capacity, he can't be found guilty of murder in the first degree. I'm not about to keep holding you. You gotta go. You gotta get in. My sweet boy. All right, um, Blue is finally settled down, but he is laying with the bear he likes to hump, so if he gets the going, just ignore him. It'll be like old times. Consider it a little bit of ASMR on the house. Herbert William Mullen was born in Salinas, California on April 18th, 1947, making him an Aries. We haven't gotten too many Aries around these parts, baby. Today is your day, okay? Now, coincidentally, his birthday was the anniversary of the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. Herbert's father was a World War II veteran who was a very strict parent, but he was not abusive at all. He was just very, very strict, very stern, which was probably influenced by his military life. I don't know. He just, he ran a tight ship. I don't have too much information on his mom or like what his relationship was like, but from what I read, his Childhood was pretty much a typical childhood. He was a typical child. He grew up very social. He was involved in all of the things in high school. He was actually even voted most likely to succeed. Child, he succeeded in some things, but I doubt it was what they were thinking he would succeed in. Life was pretty cute for Herbert throughout his adolescence and his childhood, but that kind of changed for Herbert after he graduated. Right after graduating high school, he loses his best friend in a car accident, which was very traumatizing to him, as I'm sure it would be for any of us. I don't know why I like applying this foundation with this big girl. I just like it. I just like doing it. This very deeply emotionally affected Herbert. So much so that in response to this, he built a shrine in his room, like dedicated to his best friend. Not long after this, Herbert expressed that he had some homosexual feelings that he was uncomfortable with. And at the time, he had never had any experiences. He actually had a long-term girlfriend. And it could have just been the time they grew up that it was just not as accepted. And so, you know, he just didn't want to explored that side of who he really was but this confusion kind of kicked off a string of strange behaviors from Herbert. Now according to multiple reports Herbert began putting out cigarettes on his own skin and he would do this a lot. He was also evicted from his apartment for pounding on the floors and yelling and screaming and having these domestic disturbances with people who were not actually there. Now, he did not keep his mental disturbances a secret. He actually confided in some co-workers that he had begun hearing voices and he wasn't really sure what to do about it, but it disturbed him so much so that he decided that he had a difficult time naturally coping with these issues. He began experimenting with LSD and abusing amphetamines, which of course did not help his mental state at all. It kind of just made shit worse. By this time, his family really took notice to a lot of like his outbursts and just the side effects of his mental state. And so they decided to commit him to a hospital. He's 21 at the time. I think I just said that, don't know, but if I didn't, he's 21. The very first time they committed him, which would actually be the first of many times that they would have him committed in an effort to try to get him help and just improve his quality of life. But each and every time that they had him committed, he would stay for just a little while and then he would check himself out because he was of the legal age to do so. By the age of 23, he had been diagnosed schizophrenic by three different doctors. Now at 72 he's now 25 years old and he's kind of having some 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 troubles adulting so he decides that the best thing for him to do at that time is to move back home with his parents which they allow they probably were 
kind of happy and would prefer to have him underneath their roof so they can kind of watch him and you know get him some help now this same year a mathematician predicts that on january 4th of 1973 that the san andreas fault would once again unleash this massive earthquake on northern california that would be as devastating as the one that had taken place in 1906 and so homeboy's antennas went up like say what now the voices in his head already connected his birth to the 1906 earthquake that his birth was the anniversary of and so they pretty much tell herbert like sis we can prevent this and there's only one way to do it honey they tell him that the only way to prevent this the only way to save northern california is to sacrifice human life and that it was all up to him to do so and save all of Northern California. Now luckily Herbert believed that the Vietnam War had produced enough American deaths to like stall the earthquake and I guess satisfy it in the time being. But what's unfortunate is that the well it's not unfortunate that the war was winding down but in this sense it is because then he felt like with the war winding down that it would then be up to him to keep providing these human sacrifices and these human lives to keep the earthquake at bay. Now on October 13th 1972 Herbert is in his car he's driving down the road and he spots a 55 year old hitchhiker by the name of Lawrence White. Once he spots Lawrence he then pulls over his car to the side of the road like just ahead of Lawrence and he completely ignores the man he pops the hood of his trunk he pretends like he's having car trouble Lawrence being a unsuspecting good Samaritan he approaches Herbert and he offers to take a look to see if it's something that he could potentially help with Herbert accepts Lawrence's offer to help and while Lawrence is bent forward looking underneath the hood of Herbert's car Herbert goes and retrieves a baseball bat and bludgeons him. Afterward, he just leaves him on the side of the road, he gets in his car, and he drives off. Now, we later find out that Herbert has a completely different, like, perspective of what actually happened that day. See, in his mind, Lawrence was actually Jonah from the Bible, who had telepathically sent him, Herbert, a message saying, kill me. So the others can survive. His next victim was a 24 year old college student by the name of Mary. On October 4th 1972 just 11 days later Mary is on her way to an interview. She's running late and she decides to hitchhike. I mean this is the 70s a lot of people they hitchhike during this time. It's like you little young folks version of uber unfortunately the first person that decides to stop and offer her a ride is herbert he pulls over offering the young girl a ride to which she accepts because like i said she's already running late it's for an interview and she's trying to just she's just trying to get there this man once he has her in the car instead of taking her to her destination he attacks her in the car he stabs the poor girl he also dissects her and scatters her remains along the road now about a week and a half later on november 2nd he goes to a church to confess his sins right he visits saint mary's catholic church over in los gatos california i thought gatos were cookies or is that cats i don't know but that's where he was now what sins he was confessing to i don't know if it was his everyday like little you and me sins or if it was like the big stuff they had been doing whatever the case he goes there to meet 64 year old father henry he's in the confessional booth and he's talking to the priest now it's unknown exactly what father henry said to herbert or what herbert said to father henry but apparently, the damn showing what Henry thought he was saying because Herbert somehow becomes convinced that Father Henry volunteered to be his next sacrifice. And so he attacks the poor man, punctures his heart, and then flees the church. Now, luckily, there was a witness that got a clear view of him as he was running and fleeing the church. But the witness pretty much just describes to police a tall man wearing dark clothing and black boots. And child, this wasn't, this wasn't all that that helpful to the police because that literally could have been me granted i'm not a man but i i think you get what i'm saying bars i mean catch me without my wig on they <laughs> i could fit that description so yeah they were also under the mistaken impression that he was a burglar so they really were just Honey, they were so far off right after this herbert decides to go join the u.s marines because 
that's what they like to try to do with y'all. I don't know why. You know, they always try to go be a little service member for some time. Apparently, they like to try to go over there and see what's going on. Now, he passes the physical test. And oddly, he passes the psychiatric test as well, somehow. However, he is denied entry when it's discovered that he had a couple of minor arrests due to, like, disruptive behaviors in the past. And so, they ended up telling him access denied child no ma'am so the marines ends up pretty much telling him you can't sit with this his rejection by the marines only intensified his paranoia now one thing about his paranoia is he began to blame drugs for all of his problems and this led him to stop using the drugs so i guess that was kind of a good thing and it sounds like he's taking a step in the right direction but honey you know i wouldn't be here telling you this story if if that were the case or if it continued down that path, right? On January 4th, 1973, it goes and comes without an earthquake as the mathematician had predicted. And this is just at that point really secure in his thinking that he has prevented the earthquake. That he is the earthquake whisperer up in this beach, okay? He is more confident now than ever in his purpose. Now, he purchases several firearms. And while all of his previous victims were kind of like victims of convenience, people that he kind of run into, he plans his next victim. 25-year-old Jim is a high school friend of his who had previously sold him marijuana. He devises a plan to then make Jim his next target. A plan that he puts into motion on January 25th of 1973. He goes to Jim's home, but it had been some time since he had made his last purchase and been there. So he arrived arrives at the house to find that it is now being occupied by a 29 year old woman and her two children. She tells Herbert that Jim no longer lives there, but she is a friend of Jim's. So she does have Jim's new address, which she provides to Herbert. From there, he goes to Jim's new address where Jim is at home with his wife, Joan. He finds them there carries out his plan and afterward completely mutilates their bodies now after the fact he got to thinking how it probably wouldn't be the best idea to leave a witness behind he became concerned that once jim and joan were found the lady occupying jim's previous home would of course tell police that he was the one that had come looking for Jim. And so he decides to go back to the house, take her life, as well as the lives of her children who were aged nine and four at the time. And with his body count now at eight and no earthquake, he really, really was feeling like this was all he's doing. Like he was the reason that nothing was shaking. And this of course, even further encouraged him to keep going. My, my tea is gone. So mama is now sipping on some wine. And yes, it's out of a cup you're new here we get a little ratchet okay about two weeks later on february 10th same year 1973 herbert is walking along in henry cowell redwood state park he comes across four teenage boys who are camping in the park and apparently it was illegal to do so now knowing this herbert seizes the opportunity to claim his next victims he approaches the young man pretending to be a park ranger and orders them to leave but the reason that he gave them was because they were polluting the forest, not because it was illegal for them to be camping there. Now there's 18 year old David, 18 year old Robert, 19 year old Brian, and 15 year old Mark. They all refuse to leave and he takes out his handgun and executes them all one by one. Now what was really crazy about this is that they go undiscovered for an entire week and nobody finds them. And he left them right there in the park. like. I don't know. I'm not from the area. Maybe some of you who are familiar with that park in the area can understand why they will go so long without being discovered. But that just sounds crazy to me. But hey, shit, the whole thing sounds crazy to me. Since thought he was preventing earthquake with human sacrifices. So now this was another situation where he claimed to have had a completely different perspective than what actually happened in his mind. Sis said that he had communicated telepathically with the teens who all gave him permission to use them as sacrifices. Now, just three days later on February 13th of 1973, he is driving randomly through neighborhoods. He spots a 72 year old man who is out cutting his grass. And at first he passes the man, but then he goes down and makes a U-turn and comes back up the block. Now, the second time that he's going to pass the man, he retrieves his handgun and shoots him once in the heart. He does this in broad daylight. 
and then drives off. And fortunately, there were several witnesses, one of which who memorized Herbert's license plate number and of course provided that to police. With that information, they are able to quickly identify and apprehend him. They actually were able to catch up with him at an intersection. He did not resist arrest like at all. He went down without without a fight child. Now he gets down to the station under the impression that he's just gonna go in and let them know like it's a reasonable explanation for all of this, for all of the things. And I guess that they were gonna give him maybe a medal or just let him go, but uh, that's not at all what happened. He got down to the station, he confessed to literally everything, all of the crimes. He told them that it was only because he was trying to prevent an earthquake and how the one for January 4th didn't happen because of all of his vigilance. This was insane. And I'm sure that they were thinking just like you and I thinking that this is just all a bunch of BS. And it is. We're all right in thinking that. But oddly enough, a 5.8 magnitude earthquake strikes California just eight days after his arrest causing an estimated $1 million worth of damages. So sis was down to the jail looking like, bitch, I told you so. Now his trial began on August 19th of 1973. He is charged with two counts of first degree and eight counts of second. Now I know y'all know he's crazy, but can y'all believe he got down to the courthouse and tried to represent himself? The judge literally was not having it. He told sis that he did not have the mental capacity to represent himself in court, which obviously he didn't. So the judge assigns him or appoints him a public defender, which he attempts to fire because I guess he just thought he was just going to get around there like, OK, you're going to hire him for me. I'll just fire him. It's cool. Baby, they refused to allow him to fire his public defender. And so he was just he was just stuck being represented by an actual real lawyer who probably didn't even want to defend him in the first place. Who knows? And during the trial, Herbert got up there and he discussed all of the voices they have been hearing and all of the things that they have been telling him to do. He tells the courts that this was pretty much the plan of the voices and he was just carrying out these instructions. Instructions that he referred to as die songs. Girl, wait. He also attempts to put in an insanity plea, which was a smart move, I guess, on his behalf, but it didn't work. Ultimately, he was sentenced to life in prison and he is currently still there where he has been denied parole requests. 10 times since 1980. Hang it up, sis. It's gonna be a no. You know what? It may be 11 now because he was eligible again in 2020 for parole and sis is still behind them bars. Locked up, they won't let him out. And that is pretty much it for Herbert Mullen's story. It was a crazy one, which was actually requested to me by A. Marie or A. Mary. I'm I'll, I'm not sure which one it is, my girl. I'm so sorry. Y'all know phonics fails your girl sometimes. It does, okay? Couple of channel announcements before I go. We are going to True Crime Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so we will have a video up every Tuesday, every Thursday. Scout, Scout's honor. My favorite thing to do lately besides drinking hot tea concoctions is get out of the shower, put on a nice little silky robe and spray myself with perfume and have a glass of wine. And that's what I did before the last video. I really enjoy filming that way. So I think going forward, that's gonna be the vibe. Okay, a nice robe. I gotta order me some more robes though, because this is like the only one I got right now. As always, I appreciate you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. And before you go, I just want you to know that I love you guys so much. We are already at 85k, which is insane, and officially on the road to 100k. I cannot wait, girl. When I get my little um, my little my little award, we having a party. I'm gonna have a live stream, girl. I'm gonna give y'all an acceptance speech, all of the things. Child, I look like powder. He couldn't cope naturally every day. He couldn't cope naturally with his every. Okay. With something that he could put you. Ugh. What? And am I Megan the Stallion too? Like, what was that? It's like the fifth fucking plane. This. I'm so sick of life. Look at this girl trying to interrupt my flow. I hope these are even, but if they ain't, baby, we here now and here is what we gonna say. I don't know what's crazier, the Herbert's ass or the fact that that is literally the ninth plane.
that has interrupted this video. We are going to True Crime Thursdays and to, oh, why did I say that backwards? For watching, <coughs> it ain't COVID, mama. Mama tested negative. <coughs> oh my goodness. Mama might need to test again.